Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy Gets Addicted, written by Jen Turf. Act 1. Fade in. Exterior, Kimmy and Titus's apartment. Day. Kimmy sits on the front steps, happily sipping lemonade. Titus bursts through the door from their apartment below, gasping for air. Ooh, it is hotter than an Easy Bake Oven in there! Come have some lemonade, it's not so bad out here. Titus sits down and fans himself dramatically with a large paper fan. Kimmy pours him a glass of lemonade. Oh, look! A man and his two large dogs run in tandem across the street. We should get one of those. What? A dog? We have rats just as big. Suddenly, the man is jerked to a stop when one of the dogs has diarrhea all over the sidewalk. Kimmy cringes. And that's why I don't have either. What do you mean? Running shoes or a dog. Kimmy nods. Agree. Cut to main titles. Fade in. Interior of Ruhi's home, kitchen, day. Charles and Buckley sit at the kitchen table doing Buckley's homework. Buckley is enthralled by a game on his iPad. Kimmy enters. What's up, Chuck? Kimmy giggles to herself. Well, not a whole lot. Buckley here has been ignoring me all morning. Charles and Kimmy look at Buckley. Buckley continues to play on his iPad. What you doing there, Buckley? Buckley ignores Kimmy. Only whooshing sounds can be heard from the iPad. Earth to Buckley! Come in, Buckley! Again, all you can hear is the iPad. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Charles slams his textbook shut and gathers his papers. Well, I need a break. I'm going for a walk. I'll see you later. Charles leaves in a huff while Kimmy tries to busy herself in the kitchen. But all she can focus on are the loud noises coming from Buckley's game. She slides in next to him at the kitchen table. Buckley. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Buckley. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Kimmy shakes him. Buckley! A chime sounds in the game, but Buckley is still nearly catatonic. Only his fingers and eyes move. Kimmy, exasperated, looks around for help. Suddenly, she spots the internet modem and has a flashback. Begin Kimmy flashback. Dissolve to interior, Voorhees home, kitchen, day, Kimmy's flashback. Vera is showing Kimmy the desktop computer and the plugged internet modem. She gestures to the modem. Whatever you do, do not unplug this. If you do to white people, they go crazy. End Kimmy's flashback. Begin Vera's flashback. Dissolve to interior, Voorhees home, kitchen, day. Vera's flashback. Vera is swiffering oh, happily, wearing a set of old headphones plugged into a Walkman. She accidentally unplugs the modem with the Swiffer, but doesn't notice. Interior of Voorhees home, Xanthip's room, continuous. Vera's flashback. Zan sits on the bed in front of the laptop. She's messaging with a boy, Gage, about a, to send a kissy face emoji when we see a pop-up that says, Internet connection lost. She begins furiously slapping the keys of her laptop, getting teary-eyed. Jacqueline! Interior of Voorhees home, Buckley's room, continuous, Vera's flashback. Buckley sits on his bed, playing with an iPad. We see the same pop-up, internet connection lost. He hits it a couple times, then tosses it to the side. He crosses the room to open the closet, revealing a stockpile of brand new boxes of iPads. He tries another, hits it with a couple of times, then... Mom! Interior of Voorhees home, kitchen, continuous, Vera's flashback. Jacqueline is curled up in the fetal position in the middle of the kitchen, crying and rocking back and forth as Vera swiffers around her, still happily plugged into the Walkman, singing along to Ricky Martin's Living La Vida Loca. End Vera's flashback. Cut to interior of Orhi's home, kitchen, day, present. Kimmy reaches for the plug with determination. She rips it out of the modem. Immediately, Buckley is snapped back into reality. What that? Buckley raises the iPad in the air, ready to smash it down onto the table in front of him. Buckley! Buckley stops with the iPad, raises and looks up to see Kimmy with the cable in hand. What are you doing? I have been trying to get your attention. Look that back in! Not until you tell me what is so interesting on your mid-thighs Macintosh. My what? Kimmy points to the iPad. Whatever you're doing on that. Fine, I'll show you. But you promise to plug it back in? And you have to do your homework with Charles later. Fine. Kimmy plugs in the cable and slides in next to Buckley. It's an app. Oh, I totally know what apps are. Titus and I got all-you-can-eat mystery meatballs at TGI Thursdays last weekend. No, it's an app. Like, a download? It, it's a game. Oh, a game. I like games. We used to play Guess What Year It Is in the bunker. No one could actually win. Is the bunker an app? Or, yeah, uh, from, from the 80s. Show me your game. Well, it's called Sandblaster. It's got all kinds of stuff you can play with and win. Here, like this. A screen full of sand appears. Buckley swipes around a few times with his fingers to reveal a metal detector. 
He moves it around with his fingers over the sand. We hear little blip sounds. They get louder as the metal detector gets closer to an object. I have to find all of these things. He points to the bottom of the screen where a bunch of items are listed, including keys, a diamond ring, a gold tooth, a knife used in a murder, etc. Kimmy is wide-eyed, smiling. This is incredible. You're doing all this with your fingers. It's so much better than Magna Doodle. Can I play? Yeah. Do you have an iPad? I have a maxi pad. Is that better? I've never even heard of that. I don't think you could play Sandblaster if you're on a maxi pad. Kimmy counts on her fingers, thinking out loud. 21st, 20, 23rd. Well, then I've only got a couple days to play. Here. We have a bunch of iPads laying around. Buckley opens a cabinet in the kitchen to reveal a bunch of Tiffany boxes. Oh no. He opens another cabinet to reveal another stash of iPads. He grabs one and brings it over to Kimmy. Oh, here! This one has Wi-Fi. No way! Hi-Fi with John Cusack? I love that movie. No! Wi-Fi. As in, it has its own internet connection. Buckley looks at Kimmy for confirmation that she understands. After a moment, Kimmy eventually nods. Right. Wi-Fi. We just have to set it up for you. What's your iTunes login? I, I, I don't have one. It's 2015. Everyone has an iTunes login. See, I knew it was 2015. What? Uh, here, I'll make you one. Buckley types. Username, Kimmy. Password, boobs. Now it's asking me for your credit card number. What? Why does it need that? Well, the app is 99 cents. It, it's just for that. I always use my mom's. Oh, I don't think I should. It's fine. You can pay her back. Buckley enters in from memory. He downloads the app in record time and has it ready to go for Kimmy. Well, thanks, Buckley. Sure. I gotta go. Kimmy waves him off, already engrossed in the game. Buckley goes to the kitchen counter, mere feet away, sits down, and starts playing the game again. Exterior, interior, sidewalk, resale store, day. Titus struts down the busy sidewalk, fanning himself in the heat. As he passes the window of an upscale woman's clothing resale store, he does a double take and stops to look. On a mannequin is a giant pink fur coat. Titus is dazzled and enters the store, never taking his eyes off that coat. A saleswoman is behind the counter. Can I help you? Titus caresses the coat. This. I must have this. Okay, it's $500. Titus winces, letting out a little yelp. <laughs> but I've never had $500. Titus sits down, fanning himself desperately. Sir, are you alright? $500. What kind of place is this? Well, it's an upscale re-merchandising boutique. Mm -hmm. Titus has on a pair of bedazzled cat-eyed sunglasses. He lowers them to the bridge of his nose. Say what? A resale shop. Oh, I get it. So I can bring you the stuff I don't want anymore, and you'll give me money. Maybe. Titus is ecstatic. He pushes the sunglasses back into place. Yes, yes, of course, I'll be back. Titus leaves with renewed energy. He strokes the coat on his way out. I'll come back for you. Exterior sidewalk, day. Kimmy walks down the street on his way to the train, entirely engaged in her new game. A notification window pops up on the screen. Looks like you've run out of buckets to collect seashells. Get more buckets now. Yes slash no. Yes! Kimmy touches the yes button and magically 50 buckets are added to the top of her, the screen. She's thrilled and it adds a little more pep to her step. Exterior subway station, moments later. Kimmy waits for the train with a group of people. Another notification pops up on the screen. You found a treasure box, but now you need a glue gun to decoupage it with the seashells you've collected. Get glue gun now. Yes slash no. Kimmy is so excited she presses yes immediately. She nudges the person next to her, a stripper wearing a t-shirt that says, Stripper, I hardly know her, on her way to work. This is so great! I'm going to decorate my box! Oh, I've done that. It turns out I'm allergic to the adhesive. Kimmy is only half paying attention and doesn't hear her. Suddenly a bunch of crabs cross the screen. Another notification pops up. Uh-oh, you've got crabs. Start over. Darn, I have crabs. You too? Who gave them to you? Was it Tony? That son of a bitch. I'm gonna kill him. The stripper runs out of the station as the train pulls up. Interior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment. An hour later. Titus is frantically stuffing clothes and various items in garbage bags to take the, to the resale store. Kimmy walks in, head down, iPad in hand, not paying attention. Oh, Kimmy, I saw the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, ever in my life today. Kimmy! Kimmy! 
Kimmy doesn't seem to hear. She's gone straight to sit in the middle of the couch in the same near catatonic state that Buckley was in earlier. Kimber phone hands! Titus slaps the iPad of Kimmy's hands. Kimmy looks baffled, but it snaps her back to reality. Titus! What the hell, girl? Well, this game, I, I can't stop. I have to play. Kimmy snatches up the iPad and settles it back into her spot on the couch. Oh, you better be careful. Those things can be just as addicting as the Real Housewives. Kimmy waves him off. Fine. Waste your life. Bye-bye. Titus leaves as Kimmy leans further into the game. A notification pops up. Congratulations! Your sharps box is full. Get another one to continue collecting hypodermic needles and crack pipes on the beach. Yes slash no. Yes, obviously. Series of shots. A. Kimmy furiously playing the game. B. Clock hands spinning. C. Kimmy playing the game as the sun starts to fade. D. An hourglass dropping sand. E. Back to Kimmy as the sun sets. F. A flower blooms and dies. G. Back to Kimmy. Evening. Bags under her eyes. H. A gust of wind comes through the window and blows pages off a calendar on the wall. Exterior, interior, sidewalk, resale store, evening. Titus happily totes his garbage bag down the street towards the resale shop. He stops in front of it to admire the giant pink fur coat, then enters. I'm here to sell my goods in exchange for that glorious pink masterpiece in the window. The saleswoman takes a look at Titus' garbage bag and gives him a disapproving look. Well, let's take a look. She opens his bags to reveal a heap of gold lame, sequins, mesh, etc. As you can see, I have quite the collection. Yes, well, uh, this isn't exactly what we're looking for. What? What you mean, girl? Titus is wide-eyed shocked. He looks over to the, at the coat in the window. I'm afraid I can't offer you anything. Titus starts to tear up. Well, fine. He stuffs his clothes back into the garbage bags. You clearly don't understand fashion. Sir. He goes to the coat and touches its sleeve gently before leaving. I'll find a way. Interior. Kimmy and Titus' apartment, an hour later, night. Titus bursts through the door, lugging his bags behind him. As soon as he sees Kimmy, he drops his bag dramatically. She's in the same position on the couch as she was before. Cobwebs have been spun around her. Titus rushes forward and bats them away. Kimberly! Yes, I do want more knives to open the clamps to get the pearls. No! Titus shakes Kimmy intensely. When it doesn't work, he runs to the kitchen and gets a hot pocket out of the freezer. He throws it in the microwave and frantically waits for it to finish cooking. We hear a beep, and he runs back to Kimmy. Putting the hot pocket under her nose, Kimmy comes to. What? What happened? Titus hugs her, takes a bite of the hot pocket over her shoulder. Kimmy drops the iPad. Oh, Kimmy, I thought I lost you. You were addicted to Sandblaster. I was? How long have I been playing? They both look at the clock on the wall. It's still spinning. Gosh, we need to fix that. Lillian bursts into the apartment. Concerned. What's going on? What's wrong? I heard yelling. Kimmy is addicted to Sandblaster! Oh, I was addicted to that in the 70s. Hell of a drug. Spent three months in rehab. Of course, didn't stick. No, it's not a drug. It's an app. A game for the iPad. Oh, jeez. You kids these days in your video games. When I was a kid, we had one toy. It was a stick. And my mother beat us with it, too. Lillian, we do not have time for this. I'm just saying. I should go beat some kids with a stick. Lillian! Okay, all right. But you let me know if you need a stick. Or a hookup for some real sand blaster. Might know some guy in Tribeca. Lillian exits. Kimmy puts her head in her hands. I bet you spent a ton of money, too, with all those in-app purchases. What are you talking about? All of those little questions that they asked. Do you need such and such? Yes or no? You said yes every time, didn't you? Yes. That's how they get you. Kimmy brushes him off. Buckley didn't say anything about these things costing extra money. Kimmy suddenly gets wide-eyed and freezes. Buckley doesn't care about money. Kimmy, get the iPad. We have to see the damages. No, I can't look. We have to. Titus grabs the iPad, thumbs around a bit, and then gasps dramatically with his hand pressed to his chest. Kimmy stands. What? How much? What have I done? Tell me! You spent everything I need and want in life in a matter of hours. Kimmy looks at him questioningly. Five hundred dollars! I had no idea. Oh no, it's Jacqueline's account. I have to pay her back. I don't have five hundred dollars! Wait, what do you need five hundred dollars for? 
only the most beautifully luxurious, precious pink fur coat that I saw in the window of this scam of a resale shop. Resale shop. Yeah, they buy your old stuff and don't want any, you don't want any more. Except, they have no taste. Titus gets an idea. Hey, maybe they'd want some of your things. End of Act 1. Act 2. Fade in. Interior resale shop. Day. Kimmy and Titus enter the store with Kimmy's bag of clothes to sell in hand. The saleswoman looks up, recognizes Titus, and sighs. Titus shows Kimmy the coat. Isn't it magnificent? Kimmy touches it, nodding. I'd be like the black energizer bunny. Nothing would outlast me. The saleswoman clears her throat, and Kimmy and Titus turn to face her. <clears throat> Can I help you? Yes. I am back for my firm. We brought more items for your consideration. The woman takes the bag reluctantly and pulls out Kimmy's dresses from her time in the bunker, high-necked and long-skirted. Kimberly, that's what you brought! That's all I have to sell! Great stuff. The hand-stitching here is, is really impressive. Who's the designer? Kimmy and Titus look at each other, surprised that she actually likes the dress. Uh, Cindy Picorni. Cindy Picorni. She's been featured on the Today Show with Matt Lauer. Wow. Well. Well, I'm sorry, but I just, I just can't take any more. What do you mean? The saleswoman gestures to a rack of old-fashioned dresses, very similar to Kimmy's. Across the room, a young woman has tried one on and is taking a selfie in a full-length mirror near a dressing room. Titus and Kimmy are stunned. Don't get me wrong, they're way uh, on fleek right now, but my manager just won't let me buy any more. The woman gives them back, and Kimmy and Titus leave again, disappointed. Dissolve to interior of Ruhi's home, kitchen, day. Kimmy enters the kitchen where Buckley sits at the table playing Sandblaster on his iPad. Kimmy, angry, immediately yanks the internet cable from the modem. What? Kimmy! Buckley, how could you not tell me about all the hidden expenses in the game? What are you talking about? You know, end cap purchases, all of those pop-ups that ask you questions like, do you want to feed the stray dog you found on the pier? Yes? No. The answer is always yes! I didn't say yes. Kimmy does a double take. But that costs money? Yes! She takes his iPad out of his hands, does a couple of swift finger moves, then gasps. Buckley! What? You've spent over a thousand dollars on this game in the last two days! Oh. Well, that's okay. I get an allowance. How much is in your allowance? I don't know. Whatever is in the drawer. What drawer? Uh, the drawer with all the money in it. Buckley crosses the room to a kitchen drawer, opens it to reveal it's stuffed full of wads of bills. Kimmy just stares, wide-eyed. Jacqueline enters, looking lost. What's going on? Was there an earthquake? Kimmy remembers the cord, still unplugged in her hand. She deftly plugs it back in behind her back. I think it was maybe a, a ghost. Impossible. We had a cleansing after the pool boy died. But you don't have a pool. Kimmy looks at Buckley, but he's back to playing on his iPad. A wad of 20 shoved his sweatshirt pocket. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. Jacqueline gestures for Kimmy to follow her up the stairs. Interior Voorhees home, upstairs hallway, continuous. Jacqueline leads Kimmy towards her bedroom. I need you to get rid of my fall 2014 closet. It's outdated and I need to replace it. The closet itself? You're right, I should remodel the closet too. Jacqueline and Kimmy enter Jacqueline's bedroom. Interior Voorhees home, Jacqueline's bedroom, continuous. Jacqueline gestures towards an open closet that looks like heaven's gates. Remove all the clothes by tonight. My stylist will be here tomorrow morning and I want a blank canvas. You want me to get rid of all of these beautiful clothes? Kimmy touches the sleeve of a blouse gently. Beautiful? These are last season, Kimmy. I can't wear any of these. Take this one here. Jacqueline holds up a structured red dress. I haven't even worn this, but I can't wear it now. I might as well just do this. Jacqueline takes a letter opener from her desk drawer and slashes the front of the dress. Kimmy gasps. Zan enters. What are you doing in here, Kimmy? Zan is wearing a slash t-shirt. She sees the now slash dress in Jacqueline's hands. Oh. Cool dress. Can I have it? No! It, it's mine. Kimmy looks questioningly at Jacqueline. Jacqueline looks down with shame. Zan rolls her eyes. Whatever. Zan storms out of the room. Jacqueline avoids eye contact, quickly puts the slash dress in another closet. So do whatever you want with the rest. I just need it out of here. Jacqueline exits, leaving Kimmy staring at the clothes. Suddenly, Kimmy has an idea and she reaches into the closet to grab an armful of clothes. Interior resale shop, a half hour later. Kimmy bursts through the resale shop door with her arms full of Jacqueline's clothes. She can't even see. The pile is so high, she tosses them onto the counter in front of the clearly pleased saleswoman. 
Wow, I'm impressed. Oh, just some things I had, you know. Kimmy flips her hair back. Lying around. The saleswoman is thrilled with each piece she sees. Well, I, I can offer you... The saleswoman looks Kimmy up and down, assessing her. Kimmy shifts nervously, and her light-up sneakers flash. The woman smiles slyly, realizing she can take advantage of Kimmy. A thousand dollars for everything. Kimmy jumps up and down and squeals, then quickly collects herself. Excellent! And I'll take that. Kimmy points to the giant pink fur coat in the window. Interior Kimmy and Titus' apartment evening. Kimmy opens the door to the apartment wide, wearing the giant pink fur coat and sweating profusely. Titus is in the kitchen, taking a hot pocket out of the microwave. When he sees Kimmy, he tosses it in excitement. My precious! How did you get it? Kimmy breathes heavily, taking the coat off and hands it to Titus. She starts fanning herself with Titus' paper fan. Turns out, Jacqueline had a bunch of clothes she wanted to get rid of, so I took them to the resale shop. They gave me a thousand bucks! Can you believe it? That's enough to pay back Jacqueline, too. Oh, sweet little Debbie, I didn't know how I can ever repay you. Just don't ever let me play Sandblaster again. Titus is modeling the coat and starts to sweat, but forces himself to keep smiling. He grabs his fan from Kimmy and starts to fan himself. Dissolved to, interior Voorhees home, kitchen, day. Kimmy walks in carrying an envelope full of cash. She goes straight to the money drawer and deposits $500 with a sigh of relief. She closes the drawer. Suddenly, Jacqueline walks in carrying her dog, Abattoir. Kimmy, I'm glad you're here. Kimmy whips around to face her. Listen, I need that vest back that you took yesterday. What? The vest, the Bichon Frise fur vest that you took. I need it back. It'll be the perfect addition to the outfit I'm wearing for the parent-teacher conference I have to go to. Jacqueline sniffles. Alone, since Mr. Voorhees is still out of town. Zan enters wearing another slash t-shirt and a white fluffy vest. She rolls her eyes and goes upstairs. So you'll get that for me by tonight, right? Uh-huh. End of Act 2. Act 3. Faden. Interior resale shop, day. Kimmy enters the store and looks around frantically for the vest. Two young girls are trying on old-fashioned bonnets at the jewelry counter. Kimmy finally spots the vest, but when she sees its new $300 price tag, she's floored. Now broke, Kimmy can't afford it. She leaves disheartened. Interior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment an hour later. Kimmy enters the apartment sniffling. Titus is in the living room wearing the coat. He's sitting on the couch in front of an old pedestal fan that is on full blast. He's sweating, red-faced and scratching everywhere. What are you doing? Titus turns to her. He starts to tear up. Oh, Kimmy. How can the most beautiful thing on the outside turn out to make me so ugly on the outside? I don't think that's the quote I saw in the poster in the library. Look at me! I'm hideous! Titus takes the giant coat off dramatically and throws it beside him. He immediately cools down and becomes happier. Oh, much better. Kimmy perks up. Titus, are you saying that you don't want the coat anymore? Titus runs his hand over the fur. He immediately starts to break out in hives, itching all over. He sighs. Uh, I guess you can't always get what you want. You get what you need? No, you don't get that either. Titus. Jacqueline decided she wants something back that I sold, but but now it's three hundred dollars, and I I can't afford it unless unless you take the coat back. Kimmy nods. Titus sighs and pats the coat, breaking out again. Goodbye, sweet Princess Charlotte. Take it, Kimmy Schmidt. Take it away. But put gloves on or something. I think it has bed bugs. Dissolve to interior Verhees home kitchen evening. A stiletto Jacqueline is wearing the slashed front red dress, now held together chicly with safety pins, and putting on earrings in the kitchen when Kimmy rushes in with the vest in hand. Kimmy, what are you doing here so late? Kimmy looks down at the vest, confused. I, I brought you the vest you asked for, the one you wanted to wear tonight. Oh, that. Never mind that, I decided I won't be needing it. She crosses the room and holds Kimmy by the shoulders confidently. It was silly, really. I realized I was just trying to impress and feet. I just want her to like me, so I try too hard sometimes to fit in with her. But I realize that I need to set more examples for her, not the other way around. Jacqueline hugs Kimmy. Kimmy smiles. She's generally happy for Jacqueline. Oh, thank you, Kimmy. I know you'll always be here for me, because I pay you. Jacqueline turns and grabs her bag and then leaves. Kimmy is left holding the expensive vest, not really knowing whether to leave it or take it with her when Zan comes downstairs wearing the slashed t-shirt from before, now held together with safety pins, no vest. What are you doing here, Kimmy? I work here. What are you doing here, Zan? I live here. Ha! 
Zan rolls her eyes and goes back upstairs. Kimmy leaves with the vest. End of Act 3. Fade in. Exterior, Kimmy and Titus' apartment, day. Kimmy and Titus sit on the front stoop eating froyo. Titus is wearing Jacqueline's vest, modeling it for Kimmy. It's better without the arms. Titus flaps his arms. But it's still too hot. Kimmy shrugs. Titus takes the vest off and throws it down on the steps below him as he collects his froyo cup to take a bite. Just then, they see one of the dogs from before running across the street, his leash flailing behind him. Hey, is that... Yeah, I think so. The second dog trots right up to Kimmy and Titus on their side of the street and stoops to sniff the vest. It's his friend's. But where is their owner? Across the street, they see the owner, head down, totally enthralled in his iPhone. You can hear the sounds of Sandblaster from a distance. Sandblaster! The dog sniffing the vest suddenly lifts his leg and pees all over it, making eye contact with Kimmy and Titus. Cut to black, end of episode.